What's going on you guys? Today we're going to show you how to take a basic photo and take it to a fully decked out thumbnail with text and whatever you'd like to add and everything in between. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay guys, so for me, my process is very simple. All the way up to the 15,000 subscribers where we're at today, I have used only two simple apps to make great looking thumbnails. One is the Adobe Lightroom app and then the Fonto app, which I believe are downloadable across multiple different devices and it should not be Apple specific. So you guys can actually take this and utilize it no matter what you are creating these thumbnails on. And also, if you choose to use a different editor, a lot of these same techniques apply. And so we're gonna show you how to create these awesome pictures for your YouTube thumbnails. Let's go ahead and dive into step number one. Okay guys, so here's a good example of a shot that we could use for a thumbnail, say like a travel vlog. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and give it a 16 by nine crop. So you'll see that uh, this one actually has some borders. I think this is maybe a screenshot from video or whatever the case is. You take a photo, you need to put it into the 16 by nine crop for your YouTube thumbnails. That way it fills the frame. Oftentimes you do want to leave a little space in the bottom right because that's where the timestamp is going to go So just be aware of that now What we're going to do is open this photo up in Lightroom bring out some detail enhance the color and maybe even add some text to it Let's go ahead and open the Lightroom app We will go ahead and hit plus down here and import a photo from the camera roll to use for our edit Okay, here we go We have found the photo and we have imported it into Lightroom app So what we're now going to do is scroll across the bottom and I'm going to show you guys how I generally edit my photos For YouTube Instagram, etc. So what I'm gonna do is I almost never hit auto auto is good But it might get the colors a little off It might not do exactly what I want and I want a little bit more control You'll notice that the skin tones are very orange and red and we're gonna address that as well I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo on that auto adjustment because I like I say I want that full control one of the first things I noticed in this photo is that there's not enough shadow detail or detail in the darker area so I'm gonna click on the light tab and instead of just brightening up the exposure which then blows out a lot of the background detail in the mountains you can always double tap to get your setting back to the original I'm gonna go down here to shadows and you'll see when you adjust the shadow slider that is what brings out the detail just within the shadows but also does not affect the highlights and let's say I wanted to bring out a little bit more detail in the clouds and the highlights well if it's not blown out we can actually do that as well we can take that slider and we can adjust the highlights to make them very bright which is not the goal here we want to take the slider down and now we're starting to see more detail in the clouds and in the highlights of the photo so let's just leave it here for now that covers the highlights and the shadows and now we're gonna get into a little bit of the color so you'll notice that the skin tones are very orange here and what I might do is you can uh, of course you can adjust the overall saturation and you'll see what happens there it does not look too flattering typically in my photos when it comes to the color if it's obviously too warm then I might drag it down and make it a little cooler so let's just take it a, a few degrees cooler because it noticed I noticed there was a lot of orange in this one I might even go just a tad bit further and let's take it down to a minus 10 degrees is what it says here and then instead of adjusting the overall saturation I'm gonna go right here to the mix icon and you can actually play with the colors individually which is what I like to do you'll notice the grass and my jacket the color green could stand out a little bit more so I'll go ahead and touch that green color and I'm gonna increase the saturation to specifically the greens now look at what happened to Devin's lenses on those uh, glasses as well they also pop a little bit more now what we can do is we can even adjust the luminance which is the brightness of that specific color so if we want those greens to pop even more you're seeing her lenses in my jacket shift a little bit I like the look of the luminance being a little to the right here and having that brighter green color we can even adjust the hue of the color almost changing that green uh, color to uh, like some sort of a yellow into a deeper shade of green I like just the standard green look so I'm just gonna double tap that and leave it now the yellows this is pretty interesting you'll notice the grass in the background is a little yellow and so what I can do is I can increase that saturation now the grass stands out more and what you can even do if the grass is yellow but you want it to look more green Green, you can even adjust the hue of the yellow towards the green on the hue and now look at that the grass looks more green in the background it might give that photo more appeal that is based on your preference but you can adjust those yellows to almost make it look more like fall if you adjust it to the left or more like a spring or summertime shot if you adjust those yellows to the right when the grass doesn't have much color. This is something I will frequently do in my edits and you can always hard press or long press on the photo to see the original and what you've got done to the edit so far. Now let's go ahead and bring out the blues because I noticed there's a lot of blues in the background as well. So what I've done here is I'm just sliding that blue slider across to the right 
and boom, now the sky is popping with more of that bluer tone. Remember, you can adjust the hue. This is gonna take it more towards a purple, which we do not want, or towards more of a cyan or that uh, lighter blue color there, the turquoise. We do not want that, so we're just gonna leave it the standard blue. And lastly, the luminance on the blues, you can adjust to make the blues a little bit darker. Now you're seeing more detail in the clouds, but it also looks a little too highly processed. So I think we're gonna leave that. Uh, so this is more towards the other side of the spectrum where now everything is blown out. I think we're just gonna leave the luminance on the blues where it sits here. And now what I wanna to talk to you guys about is skin tones because our skin looks a little reddish and maybe unnatural. So what we can do is we can come over to the red color specifically, and we can just bring out the luminance and look at our skin tones brighten up just a little bit. And I, can, I might even take the reds down just a hair so it looks more natural. Now when we zoom in, there's still orange, but the reds have gone away a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the oranges, and I'm going to take down the saturation just a little bit, and I will even brighten the oranges up a little bit. Now you'll notice our skin tones stand out even, you'll, you'll notice that the skin is not as orange, but now also our faces are a little bit more brighter. And this is an overall great photo so far. I think we could do just a couple more colors individually, but I think things are turning out great. After the color, sometimes what I'll do with my photos is I'll go into the effects tab and I'll add a little bit of this texture, which is kind of like a micro contrast. I used to play with the clarity a lot. This gives it that grungy look you'll see in a lot of my photos that I do really like. Um, and so if we do apply that, I like what it's doing with the mountains. So what I would do is probably go somewhere in the middle here and leave the shot something like this. Next is the vignetting. Vignetting is especially powerful if there's a whole lot of distraction going on in the background and you really want to isolate your subject in the middle of the photo. So you might bring that vignetting in. And so that is a vignette on this photo. It looks a little harsh, it looks too much. So we might dial it back a little bit, but what you can also do is select the midpoint. We can adjust that midpoint to where the vignette is closer to the center or even a little further out. So let's say something like this looks pretty good, but these uh, corners look almost unnecessarily dark. So you can also feather that with this feather tool. You see how the edges now become very defined or we can feather that. The last thing I might do with this vignette is that it still looks a little too intense for me is just bring it back down a little bit. I might just do something like this here. And so now if we look at the original compared to our finalized edit, things are looking pretty good. We've really maxed it out as far as most of my photos that I'll edit, but I'm gonna go ahead and take you through a couple more. Now let's say we wanna add some text to this photo. What we'll do is we'll go up here to the top and we'll export it. We'll save it to our camera roll. I like to just select the maximum size available, the, the highest resolution. And so now the, the image is saved. All right, y'all, so now we're gonna take you from that fully edited photo that we've just taken care of in Lightroom, and we're gonna bring it over to the Fonto app and show you how to add text creatively to make an excellent thumbnail and even maybe tell more of your story. A lot of the first impressions when somebody, well, the first impression when somebody clicks on your video, right, is because they saw a compelling thumbnail and maybe a title to go along with it. A lot of times, I will see a title that is shortened to the point, and then they might add an extra word or two inside of the thumbnail image to capture that click from you and get you to check out that that video. So let's go ahead and show you how we make these edits inside of the Fonto app to finalize this video and get these things ready for YouTube upload. Okay guys, now let's take you inside of the Fonto app. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a blank menu screen, but down here at the bottom, you have an option to uh, add a photo from your photo albums. And so if we go to recents, we'll see that this photo that we just finished up in Lightroom is uh, right here at our fingertips. Now the photo is inside of the Fonto app. It asks you if you want to select from any preset filters, but we already have this image edited to our liking, so we're just gonna leave that blank, and we're gonna hit this Done button at the very top here. Now that we're inside of the photo, we can go ahead and add, let's say this was titled Iceland Vacation. Let's just say that was the title. We might add text to this image. We might type something like EPIC in all caps. Let's go ahead and add that with an exclamation point or two. Now what I like to do is go into the Style tab. You can see there's a couple different options here. I really want to show you all these, but let's first get the color just right. So let's go into Style. And inside of the Style tab, you can make the text whichever color you would like. You can change the color of the text. And so I noticed there's some green in here, there's some blue in here, there is some red, but there's not a whole lot of yellow in the image that we are editing right now. So I'm thinking let's make this text yellow. Well, that's good and fine and dandy, but it won't necessarily stand out if we hit done. You see epic, but I would like to add a black outline to it. So I'll go back to style, and where you hit stroke, you can add a different color to the outside of your lettering. There's red, here is green, and we are just gonna add 
we're gonna add black. Black and yellow goes very well. You, and you'll see now there's a black border around Epic, but it's not necessarily quite thick enough for my taste. So we go down here to width, and when you hit that width button, you hit plus a lot, you'll see what happens to the text there. See how it's getting more and more Epic? <laughs> so I'm gonna take that down a little bit, dial it back, I just wanted to emphasize that. So let's leave it right about here. I'm gonna hit done. And now Epic stands out a little bit more because it has that black border. Well, we wanna put this probably somewhere in the top left so that it doesn't intrude with the rest of the photograph. Let's say we wanted to add an item like an arrow. We can come down here to the bottom, we can go to add item, and we can add something like an arrow. We could even change the color of the arrow by uh, selecting it, hitting color, and then let's say we wanna make a red arrow that points at, uh, let's say we wanna make a red arrow that just points at us. We can tilt that arrow, to about this right here. We can adjust the size of the arrow to if we want it just overall larger or smaller. We can get it to where we want just the length of the arrow a little bit longer. Let's say we like this right here. I will go ahead and I will tap the arrow and I'll bring it, boom. So let's say this is what's epic, right? This could be, this could be a thumbnail, right? But let's even get a little bit more creative with the text and show you some other options we can do before we make this thing go live because I think this looks pretty good. Um, but let's, let's just make a couple changes with this text to show you how to maximize this app. So let's say we want to adjust the font a little bit because we didn't like it. We can go and we can do some cool, cool fonts like this one right here. There's a lot of options. This one is pretty cool. Um, maybe not for this photo specifically, um, but for many of your edits, you might choose a font like that. Let's go ahead and just pick something fairly regular, right? So there's a good font for us. And now let's show you some of the other options within the Fonto app. So of course you can tilt. You could tilt the text if you wanted it to be something like uh, at an angle like this here but uh, that's not exactly what I'm going for with this one. One thing that I found is pretty cool inside of here is the uh, curve. So you can actually curve the text. So let's say we wanted to curve it like this right here, and then what we can do, we can, we can forget about the arrow for a second. Let's move the arrow down here. We're gonna click back on Epic, and we're gonna tilt now, and we're gonna tilt it a little bit. Let's say like this here, and then we can even move it over. Now we have some interesting tilted text. You can even curve it the opposite direction if let's say you wanted to add it like over here in the photo, um, etc. You could add Epic right here. You could do a lot of different things. I'm gonna show you 3D. 3D is actually pretty cool. You can adjust all four corners here and we can give it more of a 3D effect. So we could go, this looks pretty interesting. And then we could hit done. So now Epic has more of a 3D look. What we're gonna do now, this is one of the most powerful features of Fonto is this next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and I'm gonna come over here and we're now gonna slide over and go to erase. For this next part, you wanna make sure you have your text lined up exactly where you want it because it says once you erase portions of the text, you cannot change anything about it. You can only delete it. So we're gonna hit continue. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase the end of these exclamation points. So with this, you can zoom in. You, you see this little blue circle now? This is going to erase the text. See what I'm doing here? You can now erase the text. And I don't like that. That's not the whole point here. So we're gonna hit we're gonna hit undo. We're just gonna erase the text from around the back side of my hat to almost make it look like I'm adding more depth to this and, uh, and the text is going behind me. And you'll see what I mean here in a moment. We're gonna take our hand and we are just going to erase all that's behind the hat. And don't worry if you make an, uh, an error here or if you're off a little bit because you can always hit undo and try again. So boom, I'm just erasing all the way around the hat and now it looks like those exclamation points go behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And now look what we've got. This is a very simple tool to make it look like the text is now behind you. And I can show you a couple more examples here, but let's just go ahead and move that arrow back. Now the arrow looks a little too large with the, where the epic has taken up more room. And so now we have epic with the arrow and this can capture some attention. This could be a good clickable thumbnail. Let's go ahead and add one more piece of text. This might not be what I would put for the video, but let's say trip. And let's just try and make this text red to show some variance. Instead of hitting stroke and adding black edges to it like we had that last time, let's go ahead and hit background and let's give this uh, text a black background. This can be interesting and unique as well. So you can play with this to your liking as well. Now what we can do is we can also go in and we can erase this text. So we can zoom in and you'll see when you, when you touch the photo to go and erase, 
it shows you a little bit of a preview of what's behind that, that text. Erase. Dum, 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 dum. Remember, you can always undo and try again if you make an error. Let's go ahead and hit done and show you what we've got now. Now we have epic trip. Though I think it's better without trip in there. This is just showing you some extra things you can do within the Fonto app. I don't really care for how that turned out in this photo, so I'm gonna go ahead and going to delete it. We're gonna remove that. I now think this is a great looking thumbnail, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. We're gonna scroll down here to save image. Saved successfully. Now we can go back to our camera roll, show you the, the true before and after. All right guys, so here you have it. Here's our original, which you might think is somewhat of an unusable photo if we're getting really into it, to the finished product being your finalized thumbnail for your edits. Here's an example of another thumbnail we have created using the Lightroom and Fonto apps. Here's another good example. This is inside of the Lightroom app. I am now hard pressing down. This is another one we have edited. Look at all the color and shadow detail we've been able to bring out. This one is a pretty epic transformation as well. Boom, finished product. This is downtown Chicago. Here is a pretty great example where we added some vignetting to the finished product. So you'll see the darkening of the corners there. I also use this app for my Instagram photos. So here's an, uh, an example of a vertically cropped photo. And if I I let go of the hard press, you can see how we've completely transformed this image. We've been able to build our Instagram page from 1,000 to about 34,000 in just over a year. So we're gonna definitely talk about Instagram photos on one of the next videos. And so with all that being said, you guys, the last step would be to uh, put your thumbnail for your YouTube video. And how you do that is on the video manager page of your YouTube channel. So you will go to your YouTube channel, you'll hit video manager, you'll click a video that you wanna add that thumbnail to. You'll see it comes up with some preset thumbnails, but on the bottom it will allow you to upload a custom thumbnail, which is what we have done here. And you can hit change image and you can add one from your photo library and you can select actual size or another size. So if you get an error saying that the thumbnail is too large that when you tried to upload it, I would just go from actual size to large and that usually solves the problem. So now it's going to, now you have changed your image. Now you have changed your image for your uh, thumbnail photo and you'll be all set. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna hit save changes at the bottom of the page because I don't want to in fact change the thumbnail. I'm just showing you guys how to add that to your YouTube video to finalize this uh, project here. So with all that being said guys, that is a quick and easy way to make excellent looking thumbnails for your YouTube videos from start to finish using two simplistic photo editing apps. And the great news is again, if you don't have access to those two applications, generally speaking, most photo editing apps have very similar control. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please share it with a friend. I couldn't ask for anything more than to get this video out to more people who are interested in creating YouTube channels for themselves or maybe just editing their Instagram shots on a day-to-day -day basis, which we'll focus on in another video. And uh, until the next one, you guys, appreciate the view. We'll see you then. Peace. <gasps>